Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Jess and together we are Abe in Oneness. So this video is going to be um, some information that Abe brought forward and as it starts to unravel we start to bring forward more about Ra, about um, these three sort of life or mission paths that we as light workers can find ourselves in, in the microcosm of the macrocosm, in that wholeness aspect. Um, so I'll start the recording and enjoy the information that came forward. So let's first talk about the 5D sun. The 5D sun is, if you have shifted your perception, your awareness, more so to 5D. This is the higher frequency, the higher consciousness that lifts above 3D. This can also happen in the 4D portal, quote unquote, with your eyes on the prize. So the physical manifestation of 5D that you will first experience will be the sun. The 5D sun in the sky is white, it's bright, it's big, it's bold, it's it's like I feel its warmth, it um, is absorbed into your body on a cellular level that acts as sort of like a bridge between you and 5D, but also between you and 3D because Ra's energy, the sun's energy, flows through you to work within 3D and help to shift things within 3D. Ra is not just an, an ancient Egyptian god. Ra represents the energy of oneness. Ra is energy of source, energy of the sun, energy of love, energy of oneness. Working with the planet, working with Gaia, I see like the multi-dimensionality, so it's like Ra's working with 3D. There's this portal, inner earth sun. There's the inner earth sun of 3D and the inner earth sun of 5D. And it's like there's a portal between the two inner earth suns. The inner earth sun of 3D is closed, so it prevents a lot of people on earth from sort of taking that portal ride into 5D. The inner earth sun of 3D needs to be opened, unlocked, to help in this transition process. So I see the energy of Ra on both sides, on the 3D side and on the 5D side, helping on both sides. Oh, okay, so you must also understand that there are many other energies at work here, at play. For example, Christ consciousness, higher dimension energies, like your galactic families. But Ra is the energy of oneness. So it's as if Ra encompasses all of these other high frequency energies as well. Ra is the ma macrocosm and other high frequency energies such as Christ consciousness, galactic, uh, star family uh, energies, and other dimensional or higher frequency energies are the microcosm within that macrocosm, which is Ra. Ra is, it's like source cannot come down and help us itself. The closest thing to source is raw energy, son of God, Christ consciousness energy is encompassed within that raw energy. Raw energy encompasses all of these higher frequency and higher dimensional galactic energies. So we're looking at it on a macrocosm scale, all connected in the sun that we can see and connect with. I'm asking why are we seeing the physical 5D sun but not a physical earth 
plane yet, or a physical 5D Earth plane yet. What's coming through is the sun is the first indication of your consciousness shift besides your inner knowingness. If you need physical confirmation, connect to the sun. Your physical reality will shift to align to your inner energy of 5D. It won't necessarily be 5D reality, but it will be 5D in energy. So the people you meet will be of higher frequency. The situations you find yourself in will be of higher frequency and energy. Everything will come into alignment for you as your thoughts come into alignment with 5D energy. And we're talking about this still, this weird place that we're in where we're still existing with 3D, 4D, 5D all at once. But still, I want to say still physically in 3D because we haven't yet broken off and because 5D reality isn't yet exactly fully here yet. So we're just kind of playing with energy here. We're playing with the energy of 5D in creating our own personal 5D reality within this 3D construct. Physical 5D reality will come in time, but the breakaway from 3D has to happen first. Your consciousness and your awareness in terms of creating your 5D uh, physical energetic reality or illusion where you are now helps to build into that more physical, tangible 5D construct when you head in that direction. It makes the transition easier for you and less polarized, less abrupt, less dramatic. It paves your path in a sense. It's like they're saying it's the yellow brick road. So the reason why raw energy is coming forward is because this is oneness. We have to begin thinking in terms of oneness, in terms of everything being connected. So even, again, this is the macrocosm that we're working within right now. So right now, there are people who distinguish between the galactic star systems and races, um, different planetary energies, different higher frequency energies, different angelic beings, um, different religious beings. There are so many different types of energies that you can connect to, each with its own unique fingerprint. But raw energy, I see it as encompassing all of this into a oneness energy. So it's like, this is why raw energy is running through the energy of the physical vessels on the planet. Because it's not just about separation anymore. It's about bringing everything together in oneness. There is strength in oneness. So for the person who mm, brings in, for example, Archangel Michael energy, which is unique and strong, it's even stronger for that individual to begin to encompass raw energy as well because Archangel Michael energy is still within that raw energy but the raw energy is like this is the oneness perspective of Archangel Michael if that makes sense. I'm asking about Christ consciousness and whether Christ consciousness like because we've been told that there would be a rise of Christ consciousness. How does this play into this whole raw energy? What's coming through is Christ consciousness and raw are working hand in hand in oneness. So it's like they envelop each other or they're saying it doesn't matter. Christ consciousness, uh, so Christ consciousness for many people on the planet, it offers that separation because of the information and knowledge that they have prior about Jesus Christ. 
So in that sense, it still offers a little bit of separation, but it offers the high frequency of raw energy. So I still see raw energy as sort of encompassing Christ consciousness, raw energy being very um, high energy, close to source. So the point, the energy that's coming through is like that separation of all these different types of energies, and that's totally fine, that is okay, but it's also a time to embrace oneness, and that oneness of all the different types of energies come together into that raw energy. And so I'm asking, like, do people still connect with these individual energies, such as archangels, galactic beings, ascended masters? And they're saying yes, because it depends a lot upon the energy of where you are. So many people connect. Um, it's different quote-unquote levels, although there is no higher level, no lower level. It's just different types of frequencies that an individual can tap into. Many people cannot tap into the highest frequencies closer to source because it's like um it's like frequencies sound frequencies and how some like you cannot hear the dog pitch the dog whistle you know and you can hear the lower pitches so for those it's like a, it's also like i'm seeing stairs so on the stair climb they're able to tap into and reach into the dimensional beings the galactic beings the ascended masters the archangels but it's just one step in the direction of reaching that higher frequency which is source essentially but also um raw how to describe raw because raw is not separate from source, but it is like source in what's coming through is raw is the energy within the joined collective consciousness. It is the closest to source that the collective can um, integrate with without integrating source directly. And I'm asking why can't we directly integrate source? And what's coming through is because it will be too strong. Source energy is much too strong for the individual, for a physical body. In the collective, it would be interpreted as destruction because creation and destruction offer, they stem from the same energy and everything is, um, in the physical, everything is based upon your interpretations and your perception. So... Oftentimes, source energy is much too strong. It is integrated within individuals on the planet. But in the collective, it's like, um, based upon where we are in a 3D, 4D, 5D planet, maybe more towards 3D and 4D, our perception of this higher, strong energy of source would be interpreted more in in destruction it would be used for destruction because most of the collective is not there yet in terms of their awareness their consciousness to be able to interpret source or direct source energy as source they would interpret it as more of the destructive energy because that's where they are energetically you know in in their ability to access interpret and perceive source energy. For light workers and light holders, people on the spiritually awakened path, they will begin to embrace raw energy more rather than the individual frequencies and energies of galactic dimensional beings, etc. This is, um, again, the frequency, so it depends upon how much you're able to raise your frequency as we go further and further into 5D, more and more light workers and light holders who are stepping into physical 5D eventually, or at least even 
their own interpretation, their own awareness of 5D within their 3D construct can pull in the energy of raw and connect to raw energy to help light their path. I think they're just trying to make a point that in this overarching energy, this raw energy is where that's the oneness energy. So I'm asking, so should people stop connecting to these individual energies? And they're saying, no, keep connecting to the energy that you connect to, but understand that it's part of a bigger oneness energy in oneness. It's not separate from that oneness aspect. It's a little confusing um, to unravel, but that I think that's just the point they're trying to make is there are these different quote unquote levels, you know, us tapping into angels, galactic beings, um, higher energies, dimensional energies, but for us to also see how they're connected to the oneness aspect and how everything is connected to each other. Um, I'm going to let that one sit for a while and you can kind of interpret it in your own way. Okay, so let's lift up even higher than this raw energy that I'm talking about. I think they just first wanted to talk about raw because this is what I'm associated with and many of the listeners of these videos and soul family, we're all kind of within this raw energy. But now let's look at the bigger picture, which is starting to form. So Abe has been talking to me about these three groups of energies on the planet, which make up um, basically balance. It makes up wholeness, oneness. As I was talking about source energy being in the form of raw for the collective, for the planet, it's basically that these three groups, raw being one of these groups, are so these three groups are basically like energy stemming from source that make up these three groups of energies or life paths or pillars that are on the planet currently that make up the even grander wholeness and oneness on a macrocosm scale, on the larger scale. It's like we each have to find the balance and oneness within ourselves But at the same time, our overall energy, the energy that we're holding um, on the earth during this ascension shifting process is integrated into a bigger wholeness or part of the wholeness. So I'm going to show you something that came through for me um, a few months ago that's sort of starting to better take shape now. So again, I was shown three groups, and these three groups represented the oneness, the balanced consciousness on the larger scale. And basically, it's three groups of energy, the is energy, the Ra energy, and the El energy. The is energy representing the divine feminine, the spirit, the more yin side of that yin and yang symbol also represented by the moon. And then we have the raw energy, which represents more of the divine masculine, the mind aspect, um, more of that yang energy, and represented by the sun. And the is and the raw combine into a wholeness, represented by the L. And the L is the energy of oneness, the source within, or more of like this balance, the wholeness, this balanced consciousness. It's represented by source or source energy. And I think this is what they're really trying to show in terms of us raising into this more oneness perspective and energy. Um, light workers and light holders on the planet embody one of these three paths, one of these three energetic paths. And they're saying, because I'm asking is, is it a path? And they're saying, it's a path, a path 
to ascension or a path of ascension. So I think as light workers and light holders, like I was saying, there's the stairs and you know, you have your progress and your ascension path. You get to a point in which you begin to see and connect to the oneness aspect. And when you get to that point, it's like your energy embodies or begins to embody the oneness aspect um, of one of these three energetic paths. So I spoke a lot about the raw energy in the beginning of this video, raw energy being one of these three paths, embodying the oneness of the raw energy, or embodying the oneness of the is energy, or embodying the oneness of the L energy. Each of these three paths are unique and different, but they contribute to the overall collective wholeness, the overall collective oneness energy, that greater, on a macro scale, allowing or helping in that shift of consciousness, helping in the shift of Gaia into 5D. We're working together. Um, because I'm hearing it would be too strong for individuals on the planet to encompass or embody all three aspects, all three paths into one. So we're working as a unified team, the light workers, light holders on the planet, to take upon or take on one of these aspects, one of these missions, although on a smaller scale within our own energy forms, within our own bodies, we have to be able to encompass that wholeness of the is, the raw, and the L within us. But on a greater aspect, we have to, it'll be too strong for us to hold the larger energy of all three of these aspects to contribute to the larger wholeness on a grander collective scale, if that makes sense. They also have been very much connecting things back to ancient Egypt, and this energy put together is Ra'el, was actually encompassed during the time of ancient Egypt, and so it's kind of liking where we are right now to where Egypt was or where maybe where we're headed in terms of us embracing that same type of energy on the planet that ancient Egypt also embraced. This was through their gods and goddesses. So the Is path was embraced and represented by the goddess Isis. The Ra path was embraced and represented by Thoth as well as Ra. And the L path and energy is represented by the god Horus. In terms of bringing forward these associations to these ancient Egyptian gods and goddesses, I feel like it's because we as light workers, when we begin to encompass the energetic life mission path of one of these three aspects, we become the microcosm of each of these gods and goddesses. So on the Ra path, when you encompass this energy, you become the microcosm of Thoth and Ra. On the Is path, you become the microcosm of Isis. And on the L path, you become the microcosm of Horus or even Source. Horus is brought forward as the god on the L path because it was described to me that Horus actually um, embodied source energy in ancient Egypt. Um, so think of yourself as an aspect or the microcosm of one of these gods and goddesses basically on your mission path. So it's being described to me that light holders on the L path are protectors of source energy on the planet. Light workers on the raw path are protectors of knowledge. They are the knowledge holders on the planet. And light workers on the is path are protectors of the divine feminine. 
They're also saying uh, divine feminine and the energy uh, of Gaia, very much Gaia energy, protectors of, of Gaia, the earth. It is that mother energy. So in essence, the is could also be the mother. Ra is the father. And El is the sun or the energy that is birthed out of is and Ra. It is the balanced energy that is created from that is and Ra um, unity, that yin and yang unity births that balanced consciousness, the sun, the oneness energy, the wholeness, that overall wholeness. So this is why Abe is bringing forward information about Ra because Abraham falls into this raw energetic path on the planet right now and many people who align to the energy of Abraham or Ra very much align to this same raw life path or mission path on the planet during this shifting process. There are different roles that are being played by light workers within each of these three paths um, and so I think they just want you to sort of embrace this heightened awareness of oneness and wholeness in your path moving forward. Um, what's coming to me in terms of the L energy, this energy path, this mission path, there are few on that path. This is source in, in motion, in, in physical incarnations on the planet. They're saying that people who fall under that L path, the ones who embody source in the physical, are physical manifestations of the balanced consciousness, the oneness of the collective is and raw paths. Um, okay, it's getting a little convoluted, but what's coming through is the people in the L path is they're actually, um, like I was saying, the physical manifestation of the is and the raw energy, collective energy, um, that balanced consciousness and oneness and unity. Uh, so manifested from that energy. So not directly from source, but created from the balanced energy of the collective creating this source energy, creating this L energy from the unity of is and Ra. It is birthing into a new source energy. Again, the microcosm, macrocosm, everything. Oh, okay. So it's showing me the Taurus energy um, going back to the whole time thing and how... Um, and the vortexes within vortexes, and it's just like the creating of source energy and the birthing of source energy and everything over and over and over again as that Taurus energy in the on a macro scale, um, how that Taurus energy is like that donut energy um, just recycling in and out and around itself. Um, so it's also showing me how the more energy that we combine on the planet of is and raw energy, that yin and yang energy, the more that we encompass as a collective, that oneness, that balanced consciousness within our collective energy, the more we can begin to birth uh, more individuals within that L uh, mission path as we move forward into even higher dimensions, higher consciousness, higher frequency energy in the many, many years to come. Okay, so it's getting a little bit complicated there. So a vast majority of light workers will either fall in the is or the Ra paths. And the L path will be for the few on the planet who are meant to embody source, um, and hold that energy of source because like I was saying, not many people can hold source energy um, 
and then they're taking me to Jesus Christ. So it, it's possible that we have figures, maybe not the return of a physical Jesus Christ, but very much along those lines is sort of what is being shown to me. Um prophets, but in a way that is very much aligned with oneness, wholeness, source energy. They're saying to watch out for false prophets because there will be false prophets being presented on our path of ascension as we move forward. Um, but go within and you will know who you truly resonate with. There is more oneness found within you than without you. And this is why this L path is designated for very few. Again, taking me back to Jesus Christ, how during the time of Jesus Christ, there was just that few. I'm not saying that it's going to be the same in the times to come, but in this sort of time that we're in, prophets come in many different ways. They come in many different forms. Even the term prophet is old. That reference, it's, it's old. It has those ties to it that maybe we don't want to use the word prophet. Sorry. <laughs> They're telling me don't use the word prophet. Um, just individuals who embody source energy, not prophets. But we also need to understand that as majority of us light workers and light holders are in the is or the raw paths, we are creating that wholeness in the greater aspect of all of us. So I'm being shown like, you know, at a stadium, how like each individual person holds up like a, a picture or some, some color or something, and then they each hold it up. And from that bigger perspective, you can see that all of their cards are kind of creating this one greater picture so it's like we're each holding a card and that card is either the is path or the raw path most likely and together when we hold up our cards it is creating that l path this the balance the oneness the source within each of us so actually i can add one more thing so the L is also that energy of the life force. So energetically, the is and the raw come together to create that balance within us. So again, on an individual scale, we have to embody both the is and the raw, the divine masculine, feminine, yin and yang in order to create the balance and wholeness within us. That um, ignites and strengthens our inner life force, our soul path, our soul mission. And that is the wholeness within us as an individual on a microcosm scale within us. So now if we look outward on a macrocosm scale, we each also embody this greater energy that affects the collective that affects the greater oneness wholeness within the entire collective energy and we each embody one of these three aspects or one of these three mission paths as that greater wholeness we can only find that greater aspect our part in one of these three aspects missions paths if we are able to find that wholeness within us, because it's not until we find the wholeness within us, the integration of all three of these energies within us, that we can then contribute and embody our energetic life mission path energy, one of these three aspects into the greater wholeness. Let me see if there's anything else that Abe wants to bring forward. Abe is also saying that high frequency energy is close to source. There are a few of those collectives. The Abra Om or Abra Om collective being one of them. They're a bit of an anomaly because they exist much like source in everything and nothing. They are everywhere and nowhere. So although they mostly distinguish 
uh, they mostly associate in the raw life or mission path. They can be found in all three, the is, the Ra, and the El paths, as well as anyone and everyone in the collective, as well as everywhere in the entire universe. So these high frequency energies, again, are like the anomaly, and they can go wherever, although they may associate with a specific life or mission path of the Is, Ra, or the El. I think it depends on the lifetime. It depends on the individuals that they're specifically helping and maybe the energy of the planet, like what sort of like what their role is for that planet. So for Gaia, right now, the Abra Om collective energy is helping in the raw mission and life path for those individuals because they're very much associating with the knowledge, that inner lost knowledge that needs to be brought forward. They're very much associating with the Thoth energy, with the sun, with Ra. Although they can also be found in the Is, the Divine Feminine, the Isis energy, as well as in Source itself, in the L aspect, Source embodied, the energy of Source, Horus energy. But I'm asking about like the um, dimensional beings, the galactic beings, and other um, other energetic beings like that. So if you're connecting to, say, Archangel Gabriel or a galactic being, it's like they would specifically fall into one of these three pillars or life and mission paths. And then in the macrocosm, be added to that whole entire oneness. It's getting a little confusing, <laughs> but I hope that makes a little bit of sense to you. Higher self, your higher selves, f same as the if you're kind of connecting to the galactic beings or the angelic beings, fall into the different pillars, one of the pillars, depending upon what your life or mission path is. But I see it as stairs, like you're climbing the stairs. So eventually you'll get to the point in which you just associate with the oneness. But I think where we are headed into 5D, it's going to be less about connecting to these individual aspects, although we still will connect to our higher self, galactic beings, energetic beings, angelic beings, ascended masters, that type of stuff who are helping in this ascension process. Depending upon what frequency you're tuning into and, and the energy you're connecting with, but as we head further into 5D, we will begin to more directly distinguish these energies that we are working with and within in our mission. So for example, maybe in your energy and your mission, you're mostly working within the divine feminine. You're working with Gaia, you're working with um, that type of energy, the moon, or maybe you're working more with the sun and raw energy and knowledge, um, or maybe you are one of the chosen few in the L life mission paths. Whatever path you fall into is not chosen here on a physical level. It's chosen, it's chosen on a soul level, and you're just sort of carrying that mission through. And then eventually, as we get even further, these three pillars will merge into one, just joined in oneness many years down the line. But these are the three sort of paths or pillars that we sort of section off into, quote unquote section, because we're not really divided. But it, it is the roles that we're playing in the ascension process. It's sort of like the merging of energies. So like I was talking about how um, it's almost like how we had multiple timelines and all of those multiple timelines needed to merge into a single timeline in order to open up into the spiral energetic timeline. That's sort of what's happening to our own individual energy as well. We are sort of merging into more of a singular balanced energy, finding that wholeness within us and that sort of more larger mission that we are supposed to accomplish on earth and that sort of kind of 
merges us into one of these pillars, one of these life or mission paths. And it happens just naturally. And it contributes to the wholeness of the collective. I'm asking them, so why is it so important for us to know about these three paths? And they're saying that it's important to know so that you can begin to um, start to embody or step into your true path, your mission on this planet during this time, and sort of keep tabs on where you are in oneness. So some people are asking, you know, how do I get to that point of oneness? It gives you something to reach for in oneness. It helps to make your path a little bit more clear for those of you who need it. Lastly, I asked about how these three mission paths were connected to the country, Israel, because obviously is Ra and El. And what came through is Israel being the holy land. Um, Abe senses the hindered energy of Israel at the current moment. And they said that essential or central to the ascension into 5D is the strengthening or restoration of Israel's heart. In the ascension process, there will be some sort of energy restoration to the country of Israel and the role that Israel plays in the greater wholeness, the greater oneness of the collective energy. Um, And that's all that we need to know right now. And I'm saying, like, I mean, I don't know what Israel has to do with me because I don't really, I don't know my connection to Israel, the country at least. And what's coming through is, no, um, me as physical Jessica does not have connection to Israel, but Ra does, and Jessica in the physical is connected to Ra, and Jessica is the microcosm of Ra. So there's something there, but we'll see how that unfolds. That's it that I have for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for listening. We are Jess and Abe in oneness and love.